Hello everyone, I hope you are all safe where you are right now. Things are a bit intense, but we're gonna get through this. In today's repaint video, I am making a character that I personally adore. I am very much a geek and one of my favorite fandom currently is the Fate franchise. You likely heard about Fate Stay Night, which is probably the most well-known anime in the series. It started out as visual novels, but it has since expanded with multiple series and many video games. The character I am recreating today is a character that is currently exclusive to the Fate Grand Order game, which is on mobile. I will be making the Banana Oni herself, the Berserker class servant, Ibaraki Doji. To make her, I follow the friend's suggestion and obtain the Bunny Blanc Ever After Idol. This is a later model, but she is still just as articulated, and that was enough for me. She has the hands from a Claudine doll, which is a perfect fit for a noni, or a Japanese demon. If you follow me since a while, you remember that I used Bunny's original gloved hands for my Valentine's Day repaint in February. I had already planned at the time of doing Ibaraki. So, after prepping the doll and by removing their hair and the factory paint, I rerouted her with this gorgeous nylon hair that I got from Retro Dolls US. After the hair was set in place with glue, I went in for the face-up. This time I decided to explore a bit with color and skin tones. The doll is pink, which is a really nice color for Ibaraki, but I still use some yellow in the center of her face to create a slight change. I use Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat on my dolls, and I prep them with 2-3 to three layers before sketching the main features on the doll's face. Some of her shadows and contours were done purposely with cool tones, while I used more warm tones around her eyes. Pastels is my favorite step in doll repainting, so I usually take my time and I play with colors. I am using makeup brushes for the shading, trying to blend as I go. I bought them at the dollar store so you can pretty easily find something similar for a good price.
I blushed her cheeks, the top of her forehead, nose and chin, giving her a cute look. Ibaraki is way more on the cute side, even if she is an Oni. I always start with the white when I switch to pencils, as you might need to layer it down a bit more than most colors. For the eyes, I use yellow and orange tones. What you see here on her forehead is a guide to know where I have to put her twin horns. I wanted to add some shading to the eyes. I finished the face up with diluted white acrylic paint applied with a tiny brush. I use this technique to give texture to the eyes and the lips. I don't think it's shown on camera here, but I also gave her a little single tooth pointed upwards on the side of her mouth. I also use diluted black paint to intensify her lash line. As for the design on her forehead, the one that bleeds on her hair, I painted it on her. I just made sure to smooth the hair into place before with hair products and a generous coat of Mod Podge to make sure it would stay in place permanently. Once that was done, I glued her horns in place with super glue. I made those with a bit of polymer clay. Now for the clothes. The base was fairly simple as she is wearing a kimono. I made it shorter, approximately knee length and larger, as it looks slightly oversized on her. On my first attempt, I wanted to use white and yellow fabric to make a nice kimono that would look perfectly white on the inside. But I had to make another with only yellow fabric because it looks too thick and too stiff in the end. 
I'm still showing you how I sewed it together to get the kimono shape. The floral pattern on her kimono is all hand painted with a tiny brush, acrylics, and a lot of time. I chose that over embroidery to make sure it would not get too thick again. The top the character is wearing under is probably a kind of dress, but to make sure it was not going to hike up by itself, I made it into a bodysuit. With the main pieces of clothing done and out of the way, I went for body customization. I waited to make sure fitting her clothes would not damage the blushing, as I did not own any other doll with the same body proportions. I sanded her good with fine grit sandpaper, then I blushed mainly her shoulders as this is what will show the most, and after that was done, I sketched and hand painted the red pattern on her body. The pastel work was sealed with MSC, but I also used Mod Podge on the body paint. To make the remaining accessories, I gathered some fabric that I had in my stash that looks quite similar. I have no idea what it's called, but she has a long braided rope around her body, so I made one with embroidery thread. I had a row of beads from the dollar store too, and I took a section and painted it black. I did then the sash she wears on her side, emmed it, and I did the beads hanging from it. I finished it by painting a line of gold paint around it. The last thing I did was the big belt, or obi. I used the purple fabric I had, painting some details on it with more gold acrylic. The bow is soon on it, and I did add a snap on the back, so I can remove it if I need it. The last thing I made was the hair piece, which are simply two crescent shape of fabric that I hemmed. I added strips of fabric on the edge, using fray check on those to make sure they stay whole. I made it so it was going to held in place with two pins, painted gold to fit the design. To mimic the white fur accent on the ornament, I simply made a short weft with white acrylic yarn, and I sewed it on, passing the needle and thread through the layer of dried glue.
With that piece done, well, the project is mostly finished, and all that is left is to put her together and play dress up. If you are wondering, that sword was made about two years ago. I had attempted to do her at the time, but I was not equipped for customizing. I still have pictures of her on my Instagram, but you would need to dig pretty far back. So, what do you think of her? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you soon, and in the meantime, please stay safe. Bye!